Hello there, today I'll be showing you how you can play Zelda Breath of the Wild on your PC using the CMU or C emulator which, will, which is used actually as an emulator for the Wii U. Uh, the process is very easy, first of all I will start by showing you the, the very basic steps what you must do to have the program up and running and the game files. And after that I will show you some minor modifications you can make in order to achieve the best performance from your game. First of all, you will need to download the emulator. I will leave a link for each of them, what you have to download in the description. And there will be a, a RAR file in which you will find everything that you need. Or you can actually just Google them and you will find the latest version of them. After you have downloaded it, you must unpack it. And inside of it, you will have the actual app. After that, you will need Maple Seed to download the actual game. After you have downloaded, drag it in, into the directory of your CMU and open it up. Firstly, uh, usually when you will open it, it will ask you for the location of your CMU. Right now, my right now my uh, path to the game is in another directory but anyway when you will open it it will ask you for the path where you will have the game installed after you have opened it uh, here you will need some seeds or or some the actual place from where the game will be downloaded I will leave the actual seeds in the description depending on your zone these are these are for each one of them the first one will be for the actual game the second one will be for the for every update that came out after the game released and the last one will be for the DLCs and I highly recommend downloading all of them but mainly the game and with the updates because it will give you a performance boost overall and what you must do is just take the seed put it in and hit download and it will start to download and after it's done it will start encrypting it I, sorry I mean decrypting it and it will take not so much time depends on your download speed but usually the game will up will end up being around 10 to 12 gigs and it's not really that much after you are done and you have downloaded each one of them you you basically have nothing more to do with maple seed but be careful to download the game from your region anyway after you are done you will you, you will no longer need maple seed what you will need to do, uh, you will have the game directory here inside the, the folder of your CMU. Let me show you. So you will have everything here alongside with the game. After that, the next step will be installing the CMU hook. This one is used because it offers you m more options for the game. You must download it. it uh, you can actually just Google it and you will find it's very important when you find it to download the one for your version. And after you have it, you must extract it. And from this folder, you will only need this one, the DBG help DLL, and you must drag it inside uh, the folder of your CMU. Right, after that is done, we will no longer need anything from here. After that, we will need the shader cache. The sh what is shader cache? This one is one file in which every effect from the game will be loaded. It will be a file which will be around 60 megabyte in which all the effects from the game will be uh, cached. So let's say when you first put inside your shader cache, this one, th this file, you will need to place it inside the folder of your CMU going in, in, into the shader cache transferable and you will drag it inside here in case you have anything else uh, please delete it and then place it again inside right after that is done we will need to add some graphic packs for the actual game I have provided the graphics pack in, in case you want to play on 1080p uh, with higher res and besides that the higher resolution shadows and, and some additional modification to the contrast. This 
these files will be placed inside the graphics pack folder in Simio. You will just need to drag them inside here. After that is done, basically that would be everything you need to have all the files necessary to be able to play the game. You will have with Maple Seed downloaded the entire game, the hook placed inside, the shader cache, graphics pack, and that will be all. That will be basically everything that you need. And after that, it's time to just open up the game. And you will, let's see, we open it up. And in case you don't know, you will need to go to Options, Graphics Pack. And here you must uh, activate each one of them. So you will have each one of them active. Besides that, when you want to load the game, you will want to go to File, Load. Go into the, the folder of your CMU. Where, you, where it has been downloaded into code and you will find this uking this one will start loading up your game first of all it, for after you started the game more than once it will load the cache but first of all it will start compiling the cache which will take a little bit longer because it will compile each file and after that has been done the second time you start the game it will be only loading them it will work much faster and be aware that this uh, emulator will use up a lot of your RAM so while you start it be sure to don't have your browser open be sure to have as much free RAM as possible and basically that would be all to have the game up and uh, up and running for the performance it will uh, be very different uh, depending on your PC. Anyway, since we are done here, let me get out of this. I'm using the control which is much playable with it. Okay, we are done, the game is running. What we need to do is set the game on uh, what, we, what will you be using to actually control the game. You will have the input settings. Here on controller one, we will want to the emulate controller to be the Wii U gamepad. Now, depending on what do you have, in case let's say you have the keyboard, you will have to set every button up on which on uh, what will each one of them do. In case you are using a controller like I'm using an Xbox controller, usually you would like to use X input, but for some reason uh, the left stick will not work properly and because of that you I'm using the direct input and with this you can actually set up each button of them you just have to click on one of them and let's say this is A, B, X, Y and so on and each of them will just go continuously and that will be all just to have the actual buttons running for the game right let's get out of this Now let me show you some uh, additional modifications you can make to have the game running uh, much more optimized because you will have a lot of problems mainly because you will need a very strong CPU as much as preferable a quad core one uh, and on each core you would like to have at least 4 gigahertz speed because if you have let's say dual core with 3 gigahertz you will really see a very high impact on the performance and it's possible if you're having 8 gigs of RAM start st try running only the simu without anything in the background right let's say uh, there is one options which everybody uses more exactly that one being uh, the disabling GPU fans which will cause your CPU and GPU to get out of sync and this will give you a very high uh, performance in FPS but it will sometimes cause the game to crash so be very careful about it but usually everybody ends up running this because the performance that you get from this one is very huge so what you will need to do is go into your game profiles and look, and s look for the one that will be when you open it up with the name of the game 
case you will have all of these and don't know which one if of, of them it is when you open up simu and let's drag this away you you only need to start the game just load it in and after that open up log and in log you will see that you will have on third row the exact game ID which profile it is used for it that's all with what we need for now and if you take it and go into the game profiles search and that will be the only one right so here we would like to have only this one under the graphics so in this way uh, the GPU fence will be disabled besides that you can use this one too this one is used to lower the usage of the memory from the game without this you will see that the usage can go up to 60 gigs it can use all of your RAM but with this one it will be stable after the game has been loaded it will stay around maybe 6 or 7 it is very helpful in case you are having problems with the RAM besides that let's say that is that is set up when you start CMU be sure on options to don't have vsync on this will only kill your performance upscaling try and keep it on bilinear and besides that the GPU buffer keep it on low if you set it on high it, the game will run very badly but on low everything will be perfect and that will be all in case let's say you are having like me a dual core processor but this one has uh, two four threads you can try and I've seen just a little boost from it go to where your program is running and set the affinity of your cores to be only on the core on the real cores not on the threads so in my case it is CPU 0 and 2 and in this way in my case I saw a difference around 3 to 4 frames in, in your case maybe it will be different but it, you can give it a try but make sure to play around to see which one of these cores are the real ones because in my case these are the ones but in your case maybe they will be different or in, or in case they are quad cores you will have no problem and that would be most of the settings in, so the, until now this would be all yeah, that you have to do to have the game running to make these tweaks to have your game running at a decent performance right now if I will show you the game would run around uh, 20 FPS because the CPU sadly as, as it is a dual core it will not be able to handle the recording and the program at once but I have another video in which you can see the performance of it anyway in case you are let's say not having a around 20, 25, 30 frames because it will vary a lot on where you are and what you will do uh, there is uh, something that they came up with a very interesting modification so let's say you have tried everything and your frames are still going above 10, 50, 20 sometimes it's going very low what can you do about that? so what they did is you will need to have in my case I am using the Riva Turner from MSI Afterburner to lock my frames this one is used to lock your frames so let's say we will start actually let's start the game meanwhile and let it load in right as now as it loading as it loads in after the game will load it in you will want to add in the Excel of your CMU from the location where you have installed it and after you have it inside in case you uh, if you want to see the consumption of the game what is using right now from the GPU on the CPU in case if it would not show most probably it will be set to Victor Tray 3D and it will not work on 2D it will show up anyway what we want to do is use frame limit to set our frames to a specific uh, amount it will be much lower because we will use a speed hack using chat engine to speed it up it will not feel as smooth as 30 fps but as but it will be better than nothing so we have the game running let's let it load in wow 
while it loads in, you can start up your chat, chat engine. Right. While this is running, you will want to open up from the process list the CMU one. Right now, the game is still loading. Right now, as you can see, it's using up to 10 gigabyte, uh, 11 gigabytes of RAM just by loading it in. Right, so we have it here running. It w it's staying around 20 FPS. It's not very playable. Mainly because our CPU is 100% huge is because of the recording. But let's say this is your average performance using everything that you have. We will want to set our frame limit. Let's say in my case the best uh, workaround was to set it ar around let's say 5. And right now we will have only 5 FPS in the game. We will have here chat engine. It is using the CMU XE. Enable speed hack. And set this, we will try and go around 20 through 25 FPS. Let's say we use it all 5, and that will be 5. With 5, that will be 25 FPS. Or that will be what, it would, what we will try to do. So actually what happened, uh, the game right now, is its, it's speed has been increased. You are having 5 FPS, that's true, but it's running at a much higher speed. And you can uh, you can play around in the chat engine to s to find out which one will be perfect for you. Let's say four dot five, which will feel much more natural because if you leave it on a very high number, it will it, the game will be the game will run very fast and will will feel very different. But this or in my case, I've sometimes tried setting it down to two, and it, in the chat engine setting it up to I don't know. Let's say. 12, that would be 24, and this one is, is seems much better, or you can try going around 11.5, you must play around and see which one will work better for you, and this will be uh, in most cases if your PC just can't handle the game as it is, this will be the best way to play around it and have it running at the normal rate. Okay, we have seen enough of this. But in my case, without using uh, the frame limiter and without using, without using the speed hack, I was able to get only by using a dual core, which each of them cores are using 3 port 9 GHz and the GTX 1060, which is overkill for this game. Uh, my frames are usually at 30 FPS, but when I'm going into a new zone and everything until it will load in, it will take a little time, but overall it will feel much more natural playing this way. But in other cases, you will tr most likely try and use the speed, the frame limit. But bear in mind, if you use the frame limit after you exit Simu, set it back to 30 if possible, because the next time you will enter the game, it will start loading the cache, and if you set it on 2, it, load, it will load very slowly because it's, because it's not running at its normal speed. It will run at 2 frames, which is not what we actually want to do. Right? And that would be everything. This would be all the settings that you need to do in order to get your game up and running. It's very basic, very easy, and I hope that you will find it that you can actually do it and we will have no problem. And I'm really curious to see if somebody that has a really low uh, PC can get the game up and running using the speed hack at the decent frames. That one is I'm really curious to see because as we are setting the frames down on to 2 or 5, we are actually making the game, let's say, on a... That, that is how it would play on a very slow PC or even one frame. If you we set it down to one frame and, and in the speed hack you set 24, that would be the same thing. So please let me know and I hope I, all, all this video was helpful for you. And in case you have anything, any, anything else to say, please uh, let me know in the comments.